Bene, benvenuti, faccio un minuto di italiano, almeno anche in Italia, un grande speech to English e poi passiamo all'inglese. Grazie di essere qui, oggi appunto facciamo questa presentazione nella Special Community Night e vi introdurrò i guest, non parlerò troppo e vi racconterò che cosa, che cosa succede stasera. So, uh, thank you for being here, we start this Special Community Night to... Uh, talk about uh, new way of collaborations, a new way to use te textile with electronics. Uh, we Make is a maker space funded uh, like almost five years ago. Uh, we usually do residencies and we do international uh, collaborations and that's why also it happened that we do this event in English, I think is uh, very useful and uh, important to uh, keep the keep in touch with the international communities because uh, as makers we are really part of a bigger community rather than being local and uh, it's, a, it's, it's a nice, uh, let's say, uh, dynamic between what happens locally in a space like this where people can make a membership, use the machines, talk with people, interact and then there is another type of, co of uh, collaboration that happens online. Let's say that t tonight, I think, we are, are going to uh, tell a bit of some stories of what happens when the collaboration is uh, international, but is physical and online and, uh, and uh, staying here and also uh, traveling around the world through an online platform that allows to create a special relationship and to improve uh, the way we do our projects. Because I think this is the basics of open source and this is the basics of uh, 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 making, I think all the makers try to make this world a bit better than it is and open source is one of the means to, to reach that goal. Uh, tonight I'm here uh, with uh, also Sabina, that uh, she is uh, collaborating with me on the, um, with the collaboration that we started with the Wiki Factory. Our special guests, international special guests are here with, with us. And so today we are going to moderate this, uh, this event, me and Sabina, and we will have uh, three special guests. One is Christina Rebel. She is flew from Madrid uh, today, actually, and she's gonna stay these three days and she's going to introduce us to uh, the Wikifactory platform. And then we have uh, AJ Tech, a duo of designer, maker, and textile artists uh, that are with us for the second Maker in Residency. They came here two years ago, and now they are here again, actually to finish their project that started two years ago, they will tell us. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and they will show us the demo and they will, they will tell us, and, and you will learn what is the connection between two projects, because there is a connection. So, um, I don't take uh, much time. Uh, during the presentation, be, please be free to ask questions and don't stop, and I, we want this to be a bit interactive, also because there, there's gonna be a bit of demo, so be free to interrupt. So I think that I can start giving the award to, to Cristina, who is going to introduce uh, uh, the platform and the mission and the vision of this amazing project started like two years ago. Yes, exactly. Yes. Thank you for being here. Oh no, thank you, Joy, Sabina, Constantino, everyone for coming today. Um, I have to say, I hope we can reflect the quality of relationships that we find in this space over the Wiki Factory, which is the challenge, right? If you want to build an online community, you want to make it based on real relationships. Mm -hmm. Move away from the individual, which I think is a bit of the issue with the services that we find on the web right now. It's too focused on the individual, the individual project that is listed in some library site, when ultimately, projects happen through collaboration of people and some communities. But before I get into that, it's true that um, the spark that brought about Wikifactory was around two to five years ago. Um, we were based in London, and in our uh, community space, in our co-working space, we were seeing quite a few open source design movements appearing. And we were a bunch of technologists, really interested at the, let's say, uh, 
how we can apply open source and social technologies in, um, in different social fields. And so when we were seeing that there were these open design movements emerging in that time, we were helping out Wiki House. Uh, there was also this enabling the future, this, this I think one of the most popular 3D printed project for uh, 3D printed prosthetic hands that you could make anywhere for a disabled child. Uh, it's brilliant, it sounds beautiful. Um, and when we were seeing these movements uh, emerging, as you know, technologists ourselves, we're like, great, we want to see more of this. You know, can we see the spillover of open source software to design where ultimately you know, the world is your product development team, where we can ultimately crowdsource ideas, improvements, potential uh, problem solving. We loved it. So we started getting into WikiHouse at the time and uh, we met with a great deal of frustration because ultimately the infrastructure just wasn't there. Yes, they could be listing, and this is exactly what they were doing at the time. Uh, we were listing the architectural models for this open source home uh, on Google Drive. And we had the instructions on some PDF in another service. And we had the forum in another place. And there we were, we were about to get quite a bit of press attention and we knew that we could actually catalyze this into a real community, but we didn't have the infrastructure to manage it. So this is where uh, Wikifactory came in. Like we need to build basically the GitHub. What does open source software have for collaboration on software? We have GitHub and there is no GitHub for product design. So that was the inspiration and it led us to the current, well, if you see, we have here the social design and production platform. I would say that this inspiration <coughs> ultimately would spur the social design aspect of things, which at the heart of it, we have a global community of, of innovators, whether designers, makers, engineers, developers, all sharing projects. Projects are at the cornerstone, just like you'd have on GitHub repositories, Projects are the repositories for digitally fabricated project, uh, products. So, um, let's take the Picon telescope, for example. Uh, so if the heart is these projects, I'm gonna stand up so it's a little easier to uh, go back and forth closer to the, to the chair. Well, I don't wanna block your beautiful right. faces. <laughs> so, at the heart of the worth of having a central repository is a place where you can ensure that if you are going to draw a communion, you know you have the files, which we are, uh, you find here, the documentation, so that once someone has downloaded and they can actually read the instructions on how it works, how they can get involved, um, and ultimately, which is I think the keystone, in fact, of how we build software is the issue tracker. The issue tracker is where you basically can crowdsource ideas, um, ways to solve possible bugs, uh, think about enhancements to the project. This is at the cornerstone, cornerstone of software development and we want to apply those best practices of agile software development to the world of product development. Of course, it's not exactly the same. Software, in fact, is very different to uh, products. For the obvious, but even if we don't deal with the obvious, the fact that software is virtual and you know a product is physical, even in terms of you know the <laughs> repository infrastructure, there's something different when we're handling complex geometries than binary files. So we need to actually think anew this model of how we're gonna deal with contributions, because it's not as easy as dealing with Git and code. So we build a system based on history of contributions, where for every contribution that you do to a project, you tag a title and a description of what that contribution is. So that, you know, we can deal with the problem of version control. So I mean, uh, say we're working on a wind turbine and you want to do a change to that design, great, go ahead and do it and upload that contribution where you'll be able to specify exactly um, what changes have been made, which files have been added, 
In this case, I was looking whether the changes are anything significant. It's actually all down to the readme. But here you'd be able to see which files were uh, updated. I have to say, in a few weeks, we'll be able to see the actual file rendered. Uh, we're working so that you can actually see the <coughs> annotated comment on the 3D file. So it's a very interactive way of seeing what contributions had been done mm -hmm. and whether you want to adopt that in your further work or not. So these are the kind of you know, thoughts that we've had around how to improve the methodology in the virtual context for product design. But there's a huge difference in the fact that we're dealing with a physical object that needs to be fabricated. So this is where it gets really exciting. And this is where I think our unique value proposition stands really strong. Because ultimately, anyone who knows or is involved in the space like you guys do will know that to create this PICOM telescope here in WeMake is not just about downloading files at all. It's not even about following through these documentation, uh, documentation instructions to make it. It's down to the design to production process. There's a whole great deal of steps using different software packages and different input and outputs that ultimately makes it impossible to replicate a project if it's not specifically talking about process, away from things, but replicating process. So this is where it gets really cool. Because if you look at the world of product development in large companies, what they are building with, what they're designing with, is just, you know, there's this quote, the future is already here, is just unevenly distributed. And it's true. Product development companies have a, such a wonderful set of tools to take a 3D file, be able to simulate it, and be able to configure that design to the best settings for that machine, so that that machine can ultimately <laughs> print that reliably. Because anyone that's tried to 3D print it will know that there's a few issues here and there. And, and, and there's a process, there's a beauty in that process, and we think we, let's not remove that beauty, because you know it, it is still really enjoyable. But the point is, Let's allow for data to flow throughout that design to production process. And so what we see is to build on top our, of our file repository so that you can extend your files with a series of software transformations and ultimately being able to send to fabricator to a fabricator directly from your repository. Even just that step, you know, if you want to work with any fabricator at the moment. Um, say you're shopping around, whether you're going to be using X or Y or Z service, you have to upload all your files and your specifications to this place. Turns out you don't want their quote, you don't accept their uh, terms, it's not what you're looking for. Again, having to send your files, do the negotiation. We live in a virtual world. You should be able to provide a webhook directly to your repository where the development is already happening and not waste that time. If you speak to um, some of our friends actually have had to hire a person dedicated to that process of choosing which fabricator is going to reliably make their designs so that they can iterate and improve their designs. That's unreliable. So, in effect, this is where we are building on top of Wikifactory. We've built an infrastructure, a core infrastructure, to host files, but be able to extend that with the software programs that will see you through that design to production process in an iterative way. So that whatever choices that you made in terms of how to slice that 3D design can influence the design process. Because it ultimately does. You know, you've got a hole in your design. Whether you choose three perimeters over five, that's going to eat into your, <coughs> into your white space. You're not going to be able to screw that design. Oh, again, you have to print it. Things like this. When product development companies are able to run simulations and be able to simulate the production or the machine code of a design a thousand times to arrive at the most efficient way of producing something, there's something really interesting in that. And it's just software. And our mission in Wikifactory is to basically bridge the, product, the, the product development capacity that these big corporates have and apply it to the open space uh, and open design world.
And that's our commitment. And why? Because we really do believe in the capacity that this next generation of product designers have in developing more sustainable products, more social products, you know, products that can actually have an impact in our lives. Uh, and it's across the board. There's not a single project on Wikifactory that doesn't inspire me. Um, so this is the introduction. I hope you found it interesting. Um, and just a case in point and how we are extending the repository to do things that aren't available yet. I'm just going to show you an example of, well, I guess th this is just STL files, but let me take the case of this really cute robot, Shaibo. Uh, it's wonderful. Because Shaibo, of course, everyone has a practice of sharing STLs. Um, but ultimately, we all design in CAD. It's as if we've gone down the lowest common denominator and offered our design on STLs. But STLs are such basic geometries. If you take anything more complex, or say more advanced, like step files, we're able to specify what materials that things should be made in. You could be exploding the designs. There's so much more value in more complex design files over STL. Um, but ultimately, the big barrier to collaboration is unless you've got Rhino or unless you've got SolidWorks, you might not even be able to render it on your own computer. So we take away that issue. And in fact, we um, render uh, design files of a huge variety straight on the web and reliably. So I'm going to show you. So this is a Rhino design. And this is the Shaibo. And we're doing really neat things here. So you'd be able to, using this design, apply a mesh repair and be able to see on the web what parts of the design has an issue, maybe a, a non-manifold issue or a water tightness issue, which is actually the same problem. Um, or be able to see the effects of slicing uh, on this design on the web. The truth of the matter, there's a whole tool chain that happens and we've we focus on sharing designs, which is great, but we need to enable data to flow throughout the process, because then we're going to be making more empowering decisions as to how we design our things, and we can be more transparent and involving of others to be able to replicate it anywhere. And therefore, we can actually get closer to this idea of being able to share a design for a prosthetic hand and actually print it in the middle of nowhere in Tibet, which we actually tried, in the middle of nowhere in Tibet, and actually make it for a kid who needs it. That's where we want to head, and we're committed to yeah, bring best practices in, in design and production and making it possible for this community. Thanks. Any questions? Or I don't know. So I, I can show you, uh, and me, in these two months, uh, we involved uh, some of our community to start using uh, the platform, for, because the nice thing is that if we join now, we can really also affect uh, the way development is going. And I think uh, this is amazing, because sometimes it's not so mm -hmm. easy to also give a feedback to what things has been coded, to also say, look, it would be great to have that feature. Or, and they are always listening to what people that collaborate and upload their projects uh, have to say about what is the interaction with the community. So for example, uh, we involved the, there is a preview because we involved uh, this project, uh, so some of you may know, that is Sopra Sotto. It's a self-organized kindergarten that has uh, five years old of age uh, here in Milan. Parents that are not able to find a place in a normal and uh, state kindergarten or municipality kindergarten and could not afford, uh, uh, here we have uh, parents uh, <laughs> um, or, one, or in the future parents uh, and, <laughs> and uh, uh, some of them cannot afford to have a private kindergarten and usually from zero to three you are not really um, uh, allowed to have a place in the kindergarten if there is no space. So they organized uh, a kindergarten by themselves, organizing among um, 
parents and uh, um, finding a place that could host them during the day, we are going to release. They are going to release a kit to help other communities to build uh, self-organized kindergarten in their location. How to deal with the location? How to deal with the finding a place? How to deal with bureaucracy? <coughs> And so, uh, in, in the past months, we, we said, but how did you do with the furniture? They had some help from uh, um, some um, carpenters that could help her do, do the furniture. But we said, we could simplify this. And so, we took some ideas from what we, they got in the official kindergarten that we have here in Milan. And uh, with the help of some, some designer that were doing an internship here, in, we make, uh, we uh, support them in developing laser cut furniture for uh, self organized kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And we released all the files uh, on the platform. So it was a way for us to, to see how was the first step and how was to pu publish the, the files. And the two designers did a very great work in creating the documentation and specifying what it, it's needed. Uh, the cost uh, and, and things like that. So this is uh, one example. So it's not just 3D printing, it's not just electronics, uh, it, it can be also just laser cuts. And it can be done for local production and can be done for having someone produce for you. And, and we think it's, it's really important because in here you can really open the project and maybe you have another self-organized kindergarten and then provide and contribute to create other furniture. So we created the first five, but then there could be uh, a number. Because when you use a space that is not officially a kindergarten, you need to, and it's not all day like that, because they use the kindergarten during the day, but then in the night they have to take away the things because other things are happening. Uh, and so the, <coughs> the place is not suited for very little kids. Mm -hmm. And so this thing, for example, one of the other furniture is the, uh, cover for the heater. The heater sometimes uh, can be dangerous, very hot, so you need to create a uh, uh, specific cover and you can adapt it and make it uh, parametric so you can change the file and make the measurement that you want. So this is one of the examples. Then we had uh, uh, another of, uh, of uh, our contacts uh, that created this uh, uh, 3D spherical mouse, Mauro Alfieri, he's our teacher in Arduino, but he also engages in doing this type of uh, uh, project and is a new concept of a mouse. So it's a new tool to design and use uh, the mouse with a, di with a different shape. He's working on the, on the project right now, but he <coughs> uploaded uh, and it's nice to see that actually you can see the pieces <coughs> in, in, in 3D. Or, for example, we have uh, Sara Savian. Oops. Who just uploaded a tutorial on how to create uh, cork uh, to hold tobacco. And so she uploaded the files and uh, uh, you can create your own tobacco holder and, uh, and make it in a, in a maker space. So this is uh, uh, just uh, some examples. You want to do some more of those? Uh, yes. Yeah. Because me and Sabina work together and try to involve in different topics, the community. And what we make, we decided also in a maker space, what we sometimes find useful also as a use for this uh, platform is when we have courses and students do uh, a training program here and they have to uh, publish documentation. This, we decided to use this as a way to do it and we can collect all the material and have uh, like a methodology to publish the documentation. Otherwise, every time everything gets spread around in, on different platforms and is a, is a good way to show how a makerspace can have a repository and someone can see that things that are happening also at the end of the courses. So not professional things, but I mean, people learning how to do things and receive feedbacks from others. And just to add one thing, 
um, even a workshop could be documented on this platform and like if you have workshop you can put a tutorial on the platform not forcibly for documenting only the output but also the workshop and so that could be shared easily and quite practical too so as an um, example of I will present the project of Akability <laughs> also because we have here is it Leah? Sure. Yes. And so they already produced on another platform, their own platform, the documentation of this. If you want to talk about the tool. No, 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 no please. Uh, I like to listen what you <laughs> what you understand about it. <laughs> um so, so first of all, Akabiti is a collective and a community, and um, they basically do um, like design with social impact, especially focused on people with disabilities. So they are a sort of open space collective uh, needs, user needs coming from proactive people with disabilities, and they co-design different type of tools for like improving life and activities of of. Um, disabled people. So the Morgan, so they have a strong in interest in documenting things in a thorough, clear, very well designed way <laughs> because they are all designers, by the way. And so um, the fact of mirroring, so they have their own platform, and the fact of mirroring their documentation on Wikifactory. Um, I guess that enables at least two main things. One is like having project in a wide global communities of makers, so having a bigger outreach potentially, <coughs> or, or without potentially, for their project, and having enabling um, like a sort of, not without a sort, a, this crowdsourced potential on the platform. So especially for the type of project, like those that are followed and developed by, by hackability, the feature of can open issues and talk directly with different type of stakeholder, let's say. They could be both patients or other people having the same kind of engagement as um, accountability. Um, could allow uh, direct conversation and potential improvement or diversification, like the emergence of derivative products related to uh, tools which, in my opinion, are done for uh, responding to a specific need, but they could be even more customized because yeah. the Zoomographer is actually a tool for um, enlarging letters and, in general, it, uh, in, it helps people uh, with the visual impairment to better read and better, in case, sign and write documents. And it's very easy because just one three printed two uh, element or two, two so not one element but it's basically an assemblage of its a few elements and then um what's the actual name of the tool we need to have the uh the endoscope uh, and the endoscope webcam <laughs> exactly okay <laughs> and uh but that's actually a really good point because there's actually quite a few outreach projects that might have similar issues. So we think that the problems or say the call to actions that can be prompted through a project will happen naturally in the context, in the local context of the project, which can be shared as posts. But because we think that happens naturally in that context, we then give them a global space. So, so sorry Sabina, yeah, you perhaps. just made me think. When you discover, of course, there's people that are looking for like-minded persons that are interested in the topics that they're interested in, uh, potentially looking for projects that inspire them or to start their own, but core is the issues. So issues are given a global space at the higher level. So anyone, because not everyone wants, is necessarily wanting to lead their own project, but there's so many makers that want to contribute to existing uh, initiatives. So this is where we can give a global space to the local natural call to actions that arrive as a result of what people are doing. 
so I may just would like to add one little thing. There was one of we were discussing before about supply chain and uh, little materials. Yeah, so cool that you mentioned that because of course you know there's a lot of time spent, like in the same issue of having to hire someone that's just going to deal with, deal with what, how are you going to source your parts if you're going to get to the next stage of seriousness of wanting to roll out your product, whether open source or not. Because um, it's worth saying actually, like our challenge, whilst we're strongly of support of open, open projects will always be able to use Wikifactory for free. Uh, but we're, our challenge is actually building a collaboration platform like GitHub that is good enough for the private team because the methodologies work for them, but be able to, as a result of having private teams or corporate teams pay for the service, we can release it open. Um, but that's a separate point. Going to develop materials, um, you know, anything published on Wikifactory is at the end of the day data. So right now you're going to publish your bill of materials as just a list file. But what we're working towards is to make this an open bomb, a smart bill of materials, where in effect someone who wants to get involved or make your product can source the components from just a click of a button. Um, we think this is a really important value added. So indeed, that's where we hope to be heading. Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, we have been able to give an idea yeah. of, of the platform. Maybe yeah. we can just. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just wanted to say that right now is an invitation. So if you want uh, an invitation to be part of it, uh, just tell us and we send you an invitation to up open your profile. Now uh, it's time to give uh, the stage to AJ Tech. So that we will tell us about their project uh, and they will be also making a demo of these great things that is here. So I think you can stay in my screen, in my room here and I go in my place. First of all, we are very grateful for being here. This is our second time, so thank you for the team of Mimi. Thank you, Zoe, for your test. And um, we are uh, ATEC, also pronounced EJ Tech, <laughs> but it's always ATEC. Uh, it's uh, an uh, Alta Tech studio. We are based in Hungary, Budapest. Um, uh, I co founded it with uh, Esteban de Autora. Um, he's a media artist creative technologist and uh, I'm a textile designer. Uh, we founded our uh, studio four years ago and uh, basically what we are doing, we are working with uh, electronic textiles, alternative interfaces, future materials, we are making interactive installations, experimental interfaces, um, uh, and we are making further explorations in, in the field of HPI. Um, Basically, we have three focus areas. Um, uh, one is uh, the artistic research. So we are uh, making exhibitions. For example, this uh, photo is uh, from one of our exhibitions in Berlin. Um, uh, it was called New Ways of Viscosity. Um, 
And uh, the second one is uh, uh, at the commissions, so basically the client-based verbs. So, uh, for example, this one uh, is from the Blade Runner uh, second. 2049. It was filmed in, uh, in Hungary, and uh, uh, we did the custom uh, design uh, there. Um, Embedded in the front. Embedded mm -hmm. in the front, soft circuitry. Um, and um, the third one are uh, the workshops, lectures, and courses. Um, uh, usually, uh, we give uh, workshops at uh, universities, for example, uh, Mohaina University of Art and Design, it's uh, in Budapest, and uh, also uh, in abroad, for example, in Switzerland, um, for the topics of uh, uh, textile interfaces, soft interfaces, uh, dynamic surfaces. And uh, right now, so this is our second time here, and uh, we are uh, working on two projects in parallel. Uh, one of them is a parameter project, which is a collaboration with VMate, and uh, it was uh, sponsored, uh, the EU sponsored uh, EU program, the Voice Project Partnership. And uh, the second one is uh, uh, the, the PSD uh, work. Um, which is called soft sound. And uh, first, Esteban is going to tell a bit more about the parameters, and then I, I, I will talk about the soft sound. Mm -hmm. Just this really fast, this was the result of the previous ah. course, the picture of the previous course. That's it. It, was a prop, it was about a, a soft displays or malleable displays, very like textile displays. And this was one of the results for one, from one of the students, or a pair of students. So the a worth partnership project, it's basically uh, we make an ATEC, which is like Italy and Hungary, together in a better way, and yeah. a political way. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we are working on a project called Paramatrix. This worth project, for whoever doesn't know, it's a EU-funded type of a scholarship that's for half a year, I believe. Nine months. Nine months, and uh, you, well, it's pretty nice. I think Noah knows more about it. And uh, what we are building is called Paramatrix, and it's basically um, a chair which has a textile sensor on it, well, 48 textile sensors on it, which can sense a body print. This body print is then digitized and can create a 3D model, which can then come as an output uh, to be like drilled or created or, or 3D printed if needed or anything like this. What we are trying to actually have as a result is a service more than a final product. So we want to create a seamless service of how it would work to have a chair, have somebody go sit on it, uh, you get the data, and then you have like the file to be able to like either print it or it's a robot drill. And this is here yesterday. Uh, this is a chair. Um, this is a preview because we haven't shared this information. Yeah. They're the first people to see. They're the first people to see. Well, we will communicate it in the next months. This is Josh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? This is a textile sensor itself. It's totally made out of textile, and uh, it mm -hmm. was woven by Nicoletta. Nicoletta from uh, Modena. From Modena, and this is yarn. It's all totally hand woven. This is the a nervous mm -hmm. system and well, not, not that the nervous system, system. Not, the, no, not, <laughs> not the collective, cool, no, not the design. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And this is Georgia, this is Georgia, this is together with the. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> this is not that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> so, this is um, a nervous system, and I will show you the video. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. But, uh, we just uh, we prepared this for the midterm report, so it's not public yet. 
and we are still developing, so it's the half way. This is more like a teaser type, yeah, of, like, a really, like a rock type. Yeah. Yeah. Soft sound. Basically, um, we started this project two years ago uh, here at VMA, uh, and uh, right now we wanted to scale it up with, with make a large uh, art installation to, uh, for a, a PhD work. This research proposes to develop um, an art based study on the cross model. So uh, we wanted to investigate the, re the relationship between the textile, the sound, and the technology, and the space. And um, these are the textile speakers. So basically, uh, this, the, uh, this is a vi vibro tactile audio haptic system. So you can create uh, uh, and interact with sound through the materiality of the textiles. And, uh, Actually, when we first started two years ago, we were using an amplifier, which is you know, like an kind of like industrial amplifier, like really big. We were burning many of the textiles, and it's because it's not so simple, it's kind of like a hacked idea of how to create a soft speaker. So we have lots of problems, and then uh, two years ago here, we really pushed forward with the project. And since then, we're working on it sideways, and we thought it was like the perfect place to come back to like finalize it for her. Uh, PhD. Yes, and uh, yeah, the, um, the techniques behind it, basically we use the textile as a membrane and uh, on the top we, we use an, another textile, a conductive textile made from silver or copper and uh, here we use a laser cutter to cut the, inside the shapes of the coils mm -hmm. and then we uh, apply it on the uh, textile. So, and uh, after it, we have to uh, uh, cable the system and uh, connect it to uh, the software where we are uh, creating different uh, frequencies and sounds sounds with the, um, uh, with the textiles. And the first, we, we created really small swatches. And then, uh, and right now we can create a, a bigger ones and uh, and a really um, a high we can use textiles in high definition sound sources. So first it was just a very much kind of like a distorted uh, mono sound, and now in the project we are building a, a thirty-two speaker matrix, and each speaker is a dedicated channel. So you have kind of like a really rich sound. Each each, each speaker can kind of is, uh, create its own thing and it can be like very much if, if each speaker is kind of like giving a different frequency a little it's like slightly different it starts going like very much like, it's like it can, it can be very interesting mm -hmm. yeah, these are pictures from the, our residency two years ago basically this is the how to make the about how to make the speakers. Mm -hmm. This is uh... <laughs> this is the newest of one. Kind of like shibori, no? Yeah. We wanted to make them 3D uh, shape and um, yeah. uh, we use the techniques of the so-called shibori techniques. So, mm. um. 
flip flop style. <laughs> it's a very low frequency, very high frequency. This is kind of like uh, what we want to show you right now. Mm -hmm. Like that, I mean. This is much louder in real than <laughs> right now. Hey, I'm going to disconnect and show you. Okay, we do first and then one thing because ah, yeah, sorry, yes, no, one thing is that when sometimes it happens and since we open there is people coming here and then look at the things that we do and say, Oh my god, I would, could never be able to do this. Sometimes they are a bit afraid and actually this fact that now they published a, a tutorial on Wikifactory, it, it says, Okay, you want to do it? I mean, okay, she's been studying this for three years so she can make complex things. But you can start from the basics. So how do you make a one text size figure? So while they were here, I told them, why don't you publish a tutorial on it? And so they, because I mean, you can start very simple in um, experimenting how to really learn how speakers are made and try to use this text file as a medium to create a, um, a speaker. So they created this, uh, tutorial and uh, I mean you can follow it they you can see that they cut the laser and then they use uh, uh, adhesive uh, paper that we have here at make and you can purchase also online that uh, can attach the, the coil the spiral on the text side and that is this have you ever opened a speaker when you, it breaks also your own uh, ear pods? When you open them, they are broken. You can see that there is a coil in it and that there is a magnet. And that is the way they do the things. And you can do them with textile. So uh, so there is the circuit and that there is the part how to make the, the physical thing, the circuit, how to use the amplifier, and how to connect the, then uh, each, uh, how to make it work. So you, you can, it's not so difficult. You can start from the basics. And, and this is, I think, is the role of collaboration. When you're here, you can see what they do, but then we, we are, when you're not here, you can really try also from very simple things. And uh, I think this is a, the nice yeah. part of, of, and, and of open source. Yeah, and now that you were talking about like the uh, issues, yeah. you actually posted one, but the one that came to my mind here is because, for instance, uh, each conductive textile has like a different time for cutting and each has like a different resistance uh, so that's why it's super hard to you know like we have one which we don't even know the name of it because uh, I don't know we found it somewhere you know we have like a lot of we got it so we don't know the name we don't know the resistance it's uh, we have to cut a special coil for it and then that kind you have to calibrate it or buy a specific amplifier for it and maybe uh, by people using or trying to do this, everybody can kind of like post, okay, it took me, yeah, I used this type of conductive textile, I, I have this amount of resistivity with this type of coil, and this, uh, this is a result. And you know, it, it took us, you know, like many, like this past few years, kind of like cutting and checking what works, what doesn't, blah, blah, blah. But if there's a thousand people cutting and everybody trying their own thing, it would be much of a, a better and faster, richer result for the whole thing, you know, something like that. Someone opened uh, an issue? Yeah, but that was a different one. Uh, yeah, we post, uh, I don't know which one, should we get in? This one. Mm -hmm. This one. Uh, we opened the issue. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you opened the issue to ask uh, a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you publish something, you can also open an issue saying, it would be nice if, uh, where can you envision this technology being used? You can ask open questions, and then you have people answering your posted their own experiment. Mm -hmm. This is the, the point. Yeah. I mean, we always, when we work with this, we posted some of people have ideas of, you know, like, hey, we should make a sweatshirt. You know, like, always people want to make sweatshirts. <laughs> 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 or like on inside cars, you know, we should have like speakers inside of cars or whatever. Just, I thought it would be interesting, maybe as a first thing, to some people that have an idea, they can just Kind of, now that they know how it's made, they know maybe okay, you need a magnet, so it's maybe not the best thing to have like a strong magnet as a wearable because you know, you're walking in the tram or something. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you know, 
and all the people know the good news. Okay, cool. So we move to the demo. Give sure, yeah, yeah. applause. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Possiamo avvicinarci anche. planning to do one that has like 32 of like this and each can like vibrate at its own frequency. So because if the higher frequencies are directional, that's why you can hear them better and Actually, if you stand on the side, you will give it much less than if you stand like in the front. You can also go like, kind of like, creates a little bit of a thing. And if you lower frequencies, it's, you can't hear them, but you can feel them, especially like in two hertz. You know, like, you can go a bit higher. We have some that are, we, we don't have all the same, there are some that are bigger than others. And I'm going to show you, this is like maybe the small one. And like this. <coughs> like the bigger ones. Yeah. <coughs> and here we have like a three stack on top of each other. Yeah. wind and sound, you know, like even in ancient cultures, you know, like uh -huh. the shell, the conch, and all of these things usually are very like 
somehow connected mm. like spirals or mm. so you also play around with different spiral patterns yes and we do have different ones we are working with um, I don't know, uh, very liquefied versions. We even tried like non-spiral things, just uh, something that uh, can come some, some sort of electromagnetic coil. Yeah. But spirals work really, really nice, and we like the way they look like. And they're very much connected to sound. So that's why in the first iteration of the final work of the UHPHD is going to be, I really want to take some uh, spirals. Yes, it is.